Hello, this is Kate Simonen from the Carbon Leadership Forum at the University of Washington. I'm here to uh, talk to the topic of EPD comparability and ask the question of whether or not it's possible. The, this video is being developed in support of the EC3 tool. The EC3 tool is being incubated by the Carbon Leadership Forum and you can learn more about the forum as well as this project on the website linked up above. And if you're interested in getting access to the tool, please register for the tool and join community forums and uh, user guides at buildingtransparency.org. The EC3 tool is developed in collaboration between the Carbon Leadership Forum and Sea Change Labs uh, in support, with support from nearly 50 other organizations. And we are um, releasing the public beta version of the tool as we look to gain additional support and feedback about how to refine the methods and interface of the tool to be effective and useful for industry. At its backbone, the EC3 tool is a database of environmental product declarations. Environmental product declarations are publicly reported. We're, we're tracking the third party verified EPDs. And, and in order to use them in, or, in, at, to evaluate materials at both a material and a building scale, a key question comes up is whether or not EPDs are comparable. ISO standards on environmental product declarations clearly state the care requirements that are necessary for comparison, but they do have specific conditions that are met. And in many cases, EPDs are comparable with these limitations. The EC3 tool is working to address and facilitate the alignment of P EPDs so that users have an easier time evaluating EPDs. One of the key functions of the EC3 tool is grouping products in like categories. So the EC3 tool is meant to compare uh, between materials of similar performance in the same category. So comparing concrete to concrete, steel to steel, not steel to concrete. Uh, so the, uh, at the first, um, it, at the beta of release, we've done uh, our first pass at lumping together performance aspects of products. Uh, however, uh, when evaluating the products in a category, there are still products that have different, slightly different performance aspects to them, and so professional judgment is required. So additional guidance for each material category uh, is being developed. And a key issue of comparability is that you need to be looking at the same unit. So a square meter of carpet can't be compared to um, a cubic yard of carpet. And the, the EC3 tool works to align units and allow users to convert to the met units that are most useful to them. A third key part of the uh, issue of comparability has to do with the LCA scope and scenarios. The EC3 tool is only addressing life cycle stages A1 to A3 or cradle to gate EPDs at this time. Uh, it's grouping products together with similar use and end of life as possible. And we're looking toward at working to align how biogenic carbon and, um, and life cycle stage D are addressed. And at this point, the EC3 tool is only considered considering global warming potential or embodied carbon, and therefore other tools must be uh, referenced for health and other environmental impacts, just like cost or um, aesthetics. So there are multiple criteria that must be assessed. The EC3 tool helps people understand and evaluate embodied carbon. There are some unique challenges of addressing life cycle assessment scopes and scenarios, particularly with uh, biogenic carbon and uh, use stage impacts of insulation. And those are, will be addressed in those uh, wood and insulation material category reports. A key uh, um, strategy of addressing uncertain, uh, uncertainty and comparability in the EC3 tool is applying the burden of the doubt methodology. Most LCA practice currently uses the benefit of the doubt in which if we don't know much about the material, we assume that it's an industry average data is used. This is not conservative. Instead, the EC3 tool uh, evaluates uh, products and product categories using a burden of the doubt approach, estimating a high baseline uh, by which uh, uh, values are assessed. And if we look at a product scale, um, on the left here, you see how the EC3 tool reports data within a category. So this might be the data for all uh, 3000 PSI concretes. Uh, and if we look here, we can see the high value as noted by the A and the low value noted by the G. And those are um, uh, 
those are the, the limits of the data in the EC3 tool database at this time. The green bar here represents um, a high conservative estimate of embodied carbon in this data set. So 80% of the products are below this number and a low achievable data point, 20% of the products in the data set are below that number. So you can see there's some really high and low outliers, but the intent is to understand that the, probably the most of the products are fa falling in this um, band of the green bar. On the right of this, there's where it says this EPD, that's the results of a specific EPD, and the EPD is reported with the black line here. That's the data that comes from the EPD itself. There's an uncertainty assessment assigned uh, uh, in the EC3 tool, and there are other video and resources to describe this um, uh, method and the, how it's being approached, but the burden of the doubt approach takes a high level within this uh, range and, and uses that to sort from the EC3 tool. What we're saying here in this um, uncertainty is that it's possible that the, if we gave the product the benefit of the doubt, it would have this, um, uh, the data that was reported in the EPD, but it could be higher and it could be lower. So what we're trying to inform users is that if you're looking to compare between products, you need to look at them and understand the uncertainty that they may have and recognize that uh, slight variations, so say a, a product at 400 is really statistically not that different than a product that, that was 405 because of the level of uncertainty, but we it can get directional accuracy so that a product in which the EPD reported 400 is probably less than an EPD that had a reported value of 600. So uh, there's limited amounts of comparability, but we still get some directionally accurate guidance. And the philosophy of the, um, the EC3 tool is that uh, we have uh, a great urgency to act. Uh, we, do, um, we could have two approaches. We could uh, wait for the data to be perfect, or we could try to make the best judgments we can of the data that's available. The EC3 tool is aimed to provide uh, building industry professionals with the data they need to integrate embodied carbon assessments into the multiple criteria that they use in selecting, specifying, and procuring products. Again, I wanted to thank the EC3 tool sponsors for their support. Without them, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, please let us know if you'd like to join us. Thank you. Bye.